Hey look, it's 2017 and I'm playing a game from <laughs> three years ago. Cause that's how I roll around here. We're always on the cutting edge of modern gaming. All right, all right, all right, look guys. Look, okay, all right, thanks. Okay, okay, look guys, look guys. All right, this, this is called a backlog, okay? I, I'm trying, I'm really trying. I'm trying to get through this, but it's, it takes, it literally takes so much time. The game is Viking uh, Bukaki Spunko. So let's get right into it. Now, first things first, Fighting Climax Dengeki Bunko is a fighting game. Much like your Mortal Kombat's or your Street Fighters, or a better comparison might be made with Marvel vs. Capcom, Skull Girls, or Nitro Blasters. The idea, or at least the gimmick behind this, the marketing point, is that it combines a whole bunch of your favorite anime characters into a single universe. Now, this game doesn't really have a great story, but it actually has a pretty good setup as to why all these characters exist in a single space. That said, the story doesn't really go any further than that. The story mode takes place over nine matches. Depending on what character you choose, the dialogue in between battles will be different, but only slightly. The, the end goal is always going to be the same. Another important thing to note is that this is the Vita port. This game did also come out on PS3. So I think it's great if we do a little bit of a graphics comparison here. Wow, that is really telling. Obviously the PS3 version looks better. In all seriousness though, the PS3 version is a lot better looking. The Vita version does look really nice and the 2D art, the hand-drawn sprites, looks amazing. One thing that kind of does irritate me a little bit is the mixture of art types, the, the mixture between the graphics approaches. I really like the way the fighters look, I don't exactly like how they look on the backdrop of a 3D background. I think it should have been all 2D or all 3D. This mixing and matching just doesn't quite work for me. Let's talk about the controls. All of the characters more or less control the same. If you take a look at the move list for each one, they all use the same button combinations. However, when you use their moves, controlling what these button combinations do varies from person to person, so it will take a little bit of getting used to each new character. Even though the moves are the same, they are going to play differently. In addition to your general moveset, you have these little lightning bolt symbols here, which control your trump attacks. You can use two of these per match, and they recharge between each match. Beneath your character icon, you have your support character, which is another character you can bring into battle from another anime. These characters have two different kinds of attacks, and they work on a cooldown. Beneath your health meter, you have your blast. Blast is an area of effect attack, which can easily clear any enemy out of your way when you're in a tight spot, but this has a very long cooldown. Some characters I found particularly hard to use, others not so much. Some were really fun and easy to get into, some a little harder to master. There isn't all that many characters in the game, but there is enough variety to keep you going for a few days. The point of these games mainly lies in its replayability and its competition modes. Now, unfortunately, this is a really huge downfall of playing this game in 2017, and something I should probably be kicking myself in the ass for waiting so long for. The online in this game is completely dead. So if you wanted online matches or leaderboards, don't bother with this. This is a $20 game and not having that functionality feels like it's kind of factored into the price. But it's simply just not something you're ever going to get out of this game, at least on the PlayStation Vita ever again. Perhaps on the PS3 the story is different, but unfortunately I don't have a PS3 copy to let you know. Now when it comes to games like this, there's usually two different kinds of difficulties. One is in mastering the characters, which again, varies from character to character, but overall isn't really that hard. The other is simply in the AI and the strength of your enemies. I gotta say, with this game on standard difficulty, it's a little bit beneath the sweet spot. Stage 1 starts off pretty easy, and you're gonna be able to breeze your way through it on standard difficulty. By the time you hit stages 8 and 9, it is going to get a little bit harder but perhaps not hard enough to really compete with the more hardcore fighters out there. If you really want a challenge, you're going to have to boost this thing all the way up. 
This isn't like Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, where if you want to beat Shao Kahn, you're pretty much going to have to use an emulator and slow the frame rate down to one frame per second. Not saying I'd done that, but I totally had to do that once. If I do have one major complaint about this game, it's in the audio. The voiceovers are all great, but they're extremely compressed. You can't really tell that much when it's just playing off of your Vita speakers, but if you were to use a pair of nice headphones, or if you have your PlayStation TV whitelisted because the game is not supported on there, you'll easily be able to tell with the sound playing out of your television speakers. But really, this is just a simple fighter. At the end of the day, there's not a lot I can say about this. I did have a whole lot of fun, and for $20, even without the online, even with the compressed sound, even with the slightly dwarfed graphics, and the fact that all characters have the same movesets, just control slightly differently, I still feel like I got my money's worth. And that's because of one special thing, the Sword Art Online characters. Now you might think that I'm an SAO fan, if you look around my apartment, but trust me, this stuff, this isn't mine. This is my fiance's, and I hate this show. $20 was a damn good price for this game, because it finally gives you the best opportunity you'll ever have to beat the shit out of Kirito and Asuna, and that's something that's pretty damn hard to put a price on. Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax was worth the $20 I paid for it two years ago. That's all I'm really gonna say about this, guys. I want to say thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like what you see. Hit that like button if you like what you see. If you don't like it, by all means hit that dislike button, but leave me a comment below and let me know what's up, because I could always use a little bit of creative criticism. Thanks for watching. <laughs>